people ended up in mind, especially the boarders. Were they bad kids? Was it a punishment? Was it a reward? Hmm. Any of the boarders know why they ended up in mind? They would be willing to tell us how they ended up in mind.
scholarship to Boston College as a, what happened to me here when I became a very accomplished student on the student council and leader of the Christian Action Movement. I was transformed by the school and forever grateful. Thank you. school and it's going to be me. I think I can take us all back to 1968. And we were, even the hockey players today that I've spoken to don't believe that we actually had a championship that we won in 1968 before Bill Belial. They, they think that's in Bill. Bill Belial actually used to sit behind the bench, first row, on the right hand side when the, we were, the home side was on the side where the, where the box was above us. That was the home side in those days. Bill Blau used to sit with my dad and about four of the guys and all they would do would be yell, skate, 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 skate. I think Bill Blau kept that up for the next 50 years. Um, but if you remember 1968 was a year where everybody, we were, everybody was in ecstasy, right? And we were winning. Charlie Mandeville, we had a three seniors, Charlie Mandeville, Joey Viterra, and Bobby Martin, who were our captains. That was Larry Kish, and who was one tough SOB as a coach, trust me. We could not sneeze. We were not allowed to date, but that, we figured out ways to get around that. Um, but I will relate this, this is a true story. In, the, in that championship season, we had some boarders on the team. Tommy Fitzgerald, if you remember, we had Paul Fredette and Gilbert Dorval. Anyway, a lot of the parents would come to our houses, would come to my parents' house because, you know, we'd have an after, an after game dinner because everybody came from all over the place. So, and we were allowed, and we played on Fridays and Saturday nights, if you remember. So we had enough time after the game to go to Hojo's grab an ice cream and get our butts home because he was calling us to make sure we were home, that we had bed check. 
So we're at my house, all the parents are there. My girlfriend was a cheerleader, I had her home, so I figured I was safe, right? Who walks in the door? Larry Kish. I take my girlfriend, I shove her in the closet. I said, look, you gotta get out of here and I don't know how to get you out, so you're going in that closet for as long as he's here. An hour and 10 minutes later, he's still there. So I literally let her out my bedroom window and put her down to the ground because I wanted to, we were playing LaSalle the next night. And I remember having, I was scared shitless of this guy, right? I mean, because you didn't want to get in trouble and because you, you didn't want to not play, especially against LaSalle. So I let her out and he came in, he, he goes, he says, who was here? <laughs> she must have been wearing perfume or something. And I said, no, no, I said, that's my mom's perfume, which is, no, don't, don't worry about it. And my mom came in and fortunately defended me, one of the few times she ever defended me in front, in front of the coach. So that was one story. But the best story that I'll write, and this is from me personally, I will never forget for as long as I live. After we had won the state championship and we were leaving for Lewiston to play in the, state, in the New England championships, and we were in that bus, and we looked behind us, and there was a caravan of cars that was endless. I mean endless. I don't remember how many there were, but it didn't matter because we couldn't see the end of the line. And yeah, okay, we didn't, we didn't go up there. We got beat, but that for me was probably the highlight of being here and that feeling that you had, and that was just not us. It wasn't just the school, right? It was the whole town. This whole city exploded with interest and, and it was also, by the way, a lot easier to get a date for the prom that year. <laughs> you, just, you could wait until the week before the prom and it didn't matter, you, got, you could get a date. Um, but it's something that in my own memory helped shape me as a person, taught me the importance of dedication, of uh, the teamwork that he fostered. Um, you know, and, and because of Larry, he, he got me at the University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, I was a good student, but I wasn't that good. And I never got a big head about it because I knew they weren't recruiting me because I was good. They were recruiting me because John Harvard was a year behind me. And they wanted him, and he did come to where I went to school, by the way. So, uh, but I don't, you know, the hockey guys in those days never reached out and really talked to a lot of people. They didn't reach out across a class. They didn't reach out across a school. But there were some of us, me included, who never probably said the problem, the, the thanks that everybody in this place deserved. So from my standpoint, I want to thank everybody sitting in this room because it really, for me, shaped my life and shaped my memory. So thank you.